Why do we do a cleanup? We want to remove the non ionic carbon fluids and the solids from the well and the reservoir. And we want to get some representative reservoir fluid produced at surface. So we want to remove the liquids and the solids to allow a sustained flow and to prevent erosion damage to the process equipment. We reduce the skin and ensure maximum productivity. So the well has just been drilled and completed. So we try to minimize the damage to the well and the reservoir interface by avoiding long exposure to drilling completion trees. We want to minimize the uncertainties on the initial field potential and the fluid properties. And finally, a cleanup is going to give us some rough dynamic data. In some cases, with some operation issue, we won't be able to flow the well for the main flow and the second PBU. So what we might just end up with is the cleanup and the first PBU. So cleanup will help us to acquire some rough dynamic data. Okay, this is showing a surface schematic for a typical cleanup. The schematic is a bit compact, but in reality, it might be even worse on operations. So we go from the wallet and we got a flexible hose called a CoFlex up to the SSV. This is a gate valve and this stands for the surface safety valve. In some cases, we've got a chemical injection in the line around this point. So we've got a connection to a chemical injection pump and we might inject chemicals uh, for flow assurance. We might inject, for example, methanol to prevent the formation of hydrates or inject, let's say, a demulsifier to prevent the formation of emulsions between the oil and the water. We've got, we might have a sand filter. So this is basically two sand units in parallel to capture some sands. Then we've got the chalk manifold, which is divided into two flow paths this one here and this one here. So on the first flow path, this one, we've got an adjustable chalk. So you see a wheel here. So the adjustable chalk, that means that we can change the chalk size just with the wheel very quickly. And this is basically this mechanism. We've got a wheel connected to a cone. And as we turn the wheel one way or the other, the cone is going to move in or out of the cylinder and we change the flow path. On this other side now, we've got a fixed chalk. So to change the chalk size, we need to, to shut the two gate valve, bleed off, remove the cap and change the chalk size to higher or lower size. The chalk manifold is going to control the rate. So we're going to control the rate either with this fixed chalk size and if we've got a gas or gas condensate wells during cleanup we should always use the fixed chalk, never use the, the adjustable chalk and this is for erosion issue. So in case of a gas or gas condensate we, we will end up with two different fixed chalk for these two different sides here. But in uh, an oil well we might end up with an adjustable chalk here and a fixed chalk here. And during cleanup for an oil well we'll probably do the cleanup with the adjustable chalk. So upstream of the chalk manifold, we've got the high pressure equipment. So this is called the HP area. And downstream of the chalk manifold, we've got the low pressure equipment or LP. Okay, and downstream of the chalk, the first equipment that we're gonna see in general is the heat exchanger, which is connected to a boiler. So this is to increase the temperature of the fluid. Why do we do this? Well, it can help us with flow assurance. So as we increase the temperature of the fluid, we might prevent the formation of hydrates down the line, or that may be helpful for wax as well. We reduce the viscosity, so that will help us as well to, to achieve a better separation and a better burning. After the heat exchanger, the fluid is going to the separator, and we're gonna separate into the three phase, to gas, which is measured with an orifice plate, which is called the Daniel orifice plate, and then sent directly to the burner. The water is measured with a flow meter and stored into a tank. And as for the oil, it is measured with a flow meter in the outlet and then either sent directly to the burner or sent to a tank. And the tank will help us with the flow measurement. And then, so we've got pressurized tank or atmospheric tank and it contains between more or less 50 barrels to 200 barrels. 
Then from the time we send the liquid to the transfer pump to give enough energy to send it to the burner. And in this particular case we've got the Schlumberger Evergreen Burner. We've got some air compressors so we, we feed air into the mixture and that's to atomize the particle of hydrocarbon. Basically it's to help to achieve a better burn, a better flare.